So joining me in studio is Dr. Huhana Hickey, a disabilities rights lawyer, staunch advocate and academic. Lovely to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, Jim Edwards there, clearly doing God's work, but he's struggling. No surprise to you, presumably? Not at all. There's uh, a huge uh, disparity in funding around disability supports and services. So what is the... I mean, we need to talk about how we support our disabled community. How do we get people to buy into that? I think what people need to realise is either you have us long term on a benefit sitting there stagnating, or you have us out there doing training or doing some other services, you know, and the supports that are out there for us need to kick in and need to be able to provide us with the ability to train into carving. You know, for Māori, it's around our Māori tanga. Mm. And so for a lot of us in the rural community, it's around our Māori tanga even more so because we're closer to it. So by having a service that meets the needs as Māori needs to be there. And what he offers is a service that is meeting the needs of, of Māori with disabilities by uh, providing them not just with the skill base to develop, but also with the Māori tanga that exists. Yet he hasn't had any sort of funding increase since I think it was mm. 2004 that Carmen said. Is that fairly typical of a programme like this? Doesn't surprise me. I mean, Ministry of Health only provide 1% funding for all hauora, kaupapa Māori um, services in this country. So when we make up 33% of the population, you've got to wonder where our funding is at. Why do we not have the same equity of funding as everyone else? Is, is this the answer, the new model for supporting disabled people that the Ministry of Health is looking at? Not if it's not kaupapa Māori. I mean, we're trying to fit Māori... Uh, appropriate services into a Pākehā or a Western paradigm and it doesn't work like that. We're always trying to fit into these Western frameworks. What they need is Māori for Māori and it's really important because if we're going to have a successful programme out there, we actually need to have Māori that understand what our needs are and particularly in the rural community where there's a lack of jobs, a lack of any other service, then it's whānau that take on the role and often they're there supporting. So if we're going to have it like that, we need to actually she embraced the whole whānau, help them into the whole programme and make it work that way. So we know the government's been promising for five years to create this, this particular model. Mm. Um, it, it doesn't service, as you say, in Māori. Is, is it good generally, though? I think it'll be okay, but it's only going to ever meet mainstream populations. And what's mainstream anyway? There's multiple minority groups that come off mainstream and they're not being looked at at all. Um, there's a real lack of consultation. It doesn't, it's not been consulted with on a wider frame. And so if we don't know what's going on, and if we're not a part of that decision making, how do we know it's going to work? We're not going to know. And it's just another model. We've had a lot of models. It's like the Māori Health Plan, the Māori Disability Action Plans. They they, they weren't consulted on until after they'd designed the plan. So how do we know that's going to work? Because, so this is fatally you know, flawed, basically, exactly. think, before it's even begun. Exactly. Yeah. Um, this week the Rebstock report came out uh, looking at modernising mm. SIFs. What was your uh, thoughts about that? Another report. They've got to realise that, again, we're looking at Pākehā systems trying to fit Māori into those systems and Māori in foster care have been failed for many, many years and if we've got dysfunctional whānau, why are we not looking at programmes that will help support that whānau uh, to be able to make it you know, work better? We've got the system, we've got whānau order, we've got a whole lot of things out there that are able to be done but we're not looking at that. We put money into a situation and we think that'll fix it. It's not, it's the quality and the quality comes from good uh, experts who can work in with that whānau collectively. Also when removing a child you're actually removing them from their whakapapa and who they are and by doing that when they turn 17 you then don't have a transitional programme, they're left on the streets. I'm often picking them up on the streets having to uh, feed them and provide them with a backpack so they've got something.